We're in a Windows Server 2016 Active Directory Forest, and there's two domain controllers, and we're gonna go in and we're gonna add an additional site. So let's go to Tools, and then Active Directory Sites and Services, and there's our sites. Let's go ahead and expand that. We see a default first site name, and there's a couple of servers in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this first site name, and I'm gonna call this one Portland. Now I'm gonna go in and add a second site, and I'll explain why. And what we're gonna do is right click on sites and choose new site, and we'll call this one Seattle. And we'll leave the default uh, site link at this point, and click okay. So now we have two different sites, Portland and Seattle, and we have two different servers. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to create a subnet. So we have our internal subnet is 192.168.15. So let's go ahead and add that. And it's a slash 24. And we'll assign that one to Portland. And then we'll go in and create another one. And we'll assign that one to Seattle. So now what we'll do is we'll say, you know what, DCO2 is not in Portland, it's in Seattle. So I'm going to go ahead and move it into Seattle. All right, so now we have two sites and we have two servers. So why do we need to create these sites? Well, we don't really have to. If we, if we have a connection, say a VPN tunnel between Portland and Seattle or an MPLS connection, whatever it is we have, then we can certainly leave all of the servers in the default site. The uh, users in the Portland office will authenticate quickly because they are local to where the servers are if both servers were in Portland, for instance. And the people in Seattle would uh, end up authenticating very slowly. And that's because they'd be going across the, uh, the WAN tunnel in order to get into the server to authenticate. So what we did was we moved our server uh, DCO2 from the Portland site to the Seattle site. So that way, when users go to log in, they'll log in to the server closest to them and authenticate that way. Now that only works if you set up sites. Otherwise, it will do a round robin. So the client uh, A will log into one server and client B will log into the other, which uh, basically means that even though the server is closer to them, it doesn't mean they will use it to log into. So by creating these sites, you're telling the users in each of the two offices to only use the server that's closest to them to authenticate. So that way when they go log in, they log in quickly and they don't see the, uh, the wheel spinning forever to allow them to log into the domain. And then they can gain access to the resources more quickly as well. The reason we need to set up the subnets is because if you don't set up the subnets, then you're not going to have replication happen uh, between these two sites. So if you end up having no subnets listed at all, then you're not going to end up seeing any replication between, between them. You can have multiple subnets in each site as well. So if you have a domain controller 03 and it's on a 192.168.17 in Seattle, then that would work fine as well, as long as you add that subnet into that site as well as adding the server. The last thing to look at is the intersite transport. And earlier we picked IP. So if you have a fast connection between the two locations, then IP is fine. The problem is, is if you have a slower connection, what will happen is these packets are so large that they're great in a LAN situation, but in a WAN situation, they end up getting split up between point A and point B, so between Portland and Seattle. So what you can end up doing is taking SMTP. Now, normally that's an email protocol, but in this particular case, uh, it can also be used for intersite transport or replicating Active Directory between two locations. So the good thing about SMTP is it uses much smaller byte chunks. So if we right click on that and we choose to create a new site link, and we'll just call this SMTP site link. And then we'll go ahead and choose these two and we can move them out of the IP and just allow SMTP. So IP is out, 
and SMTP is in. So it will use SMTP instead of IP for the intersite transport for this slow connection. Now, if you end up upgrading these connections, you can certainly go back and delete this particular site link and use the IP site link instead. And you can also use the IP site link uh, for different connections and the SMTP site link for other connections. So if you add additional domain controllers into the Portland or Seattle location, you can have the site link between those servers to be the heavier IP one, which replicates faster. And then you could have the SMTP one, which has the smaller packets, but is better over a WAN connection between the two physical locations. So that is why and how we set up sites in Active Directory Sites and Services.